I feel very weird making this video. Not because Heracross fundamentally is a bad Pokemon, but rather how it started and how long it took for it to really become a lot more than it was when it started. Now, I have played from generation one and while Polyrath represents a personal favorite of mine, Heracross is definitely not far behind. And Heracross was a weird kind of Pokemon because its stats alone made it an OU Pokemon and its dual typing really made it very, very well, tough to deal with. Uh, Megahorn, phenomenal move on it, but that was not the reason you used it. It was really because of its defensive utilities and you figure 75 in its defense and well, 95 special defense is quite decent. Its Machamp level really. Um, it was definitely why you used it because you can have soak earthquakes. You know how weird that is? When I was playing Gold and Silver back in the days, I was actually forced to use Rock Smash on this Pokemon and I still have it today to get it with reversal. I'm just gonna <laughs> enforce that. Rock Smash was its only real main physical fighting type move. Besides that, it had reversal. But besides that, it has a phenomenally awful shallow move pool. Um, from my knowledge, I know we it was using Curse and I was using Fury Cutter on that until it got Megahorn. But besides that, it got nothing. I think that Thief is a possible like filler moves for it. Trust me, you don't need a lot with Heracross. Getting it in like after a second gym with Headbutt, you, you only need Headbutt and Rock Smash for it, and you will be most of the time just fine. But in OU of um, Generation, well, 2, it really wasn't doing anything that wasn't replicated by others. It used Curse, Mega Horn to get it with Rest, and Seismic Toss. Seismic Toss was basically to actually hurt Gengars, which definitely took it on quite well. But it wasn't until Generation 3 where it got Brick Break. And the thing is, it still isn't defining it. Uh, it's not a powerful enough stab. It also got guts to its ability to get it with Swarm. Who, who used Swarm anyway, but it, it got guts. And it's a very, very nice tool for it. Unfortunately, it gets it in a meta where it's not that benefiting for it. If you are encountering Rest of Sleep Talk with <laughs> Brick Break and Mega Horn or Earthquake, but it just wasn't doing it. Um, it was still an OU Pokemon. It was phenomenal in many ways. It had Soul Stance this time, and it could set up a Bulk Up also, and I believe Substitute and Focus Punch was a combination that was quite right, and it dealt well with that current meta, but it was really one-dimensional. It was doing what it was doing really well, but it just wasn't edging it until Generation 4, where it basically became what it is now, which of course, is a phenomenal mon in any way, or in many ways, in any way, many ways. But the thing was, it got close combat, and that pretty much defined it. It still remained guts, and well, still necessarily not that usable by by definition. Close combat, the Mega Horn to get it with a Jubilee that was carrying Earthquake, or even Stone it for the Flying Mons, made it very, very, very solid. Now. I do believe it gets Night Slash, it has a filler move, but it wasn't until Generation 6 when it got knocked off that that really run out. But one thing got Generation 5 that I don't want to skip out on is Moxie. Because up to this point, while Mega Cross, like I said, was defined with what it was doing, it was one dimensional. And while it still is so to an extent, it can be one dimensional on the best thing it can do. Like, it's not a problem if you're really good at something, if you can abuse it. So, while by definition, people can say, oh, I can predict exactly what you are. It boils down to whether or not, even if you know, can you stop it? If it's a gut set, then yes, you have the speed advantage to maybe beat it. But if it's a moxie set with choice cough, are you screwed after plus one? Or can you stop it? Because that thing will just steamroll a whole team. Hell, I'll be in the receiving end of that very, very treatment. And, um,. Yeah, I mean, Heracross became the very mod we know today. Uh, I really can't say much more than that. We got you know, the Flame Orb nerf or a Burn nerf in Generation 6 or 7 and you kind of pushed it even further. But from Generation 4, it was an apex sweeping train wreck of a mod. It just ripped through teams with, with ease, really. But it's kind of fun thinking about Generation 2 and 3 to an extent. While it was good, it was nowhere near as good as it could have been. Hell, using Heracross for its defensive utilities, that's kind of messed up when you think about it. In Generation 3, without proper stab, 
it had Mars Kid could come in on it, and while it was good in its own right, it was limited by the fault of its type and, and well, let's just say that that kinda, kinda worked out for it after that. Radiation 4 gave it all it needed, and from there it just got buff after buff. And there are small tweaks, so they're not like perfect for it, but the thing is, what it's doing, like I said, are so good, that what else do you want to do with it? Hell, the Mega Evolution kind of redefined as a wall breaker instead of a sweeper. Trust me, doing both is fine anyway. So that's it guys, so if you enjoyed this video, what do you think about Heracross, and which Pokemon do you want to see me cover next? Until then, take care of one right.